Okay, one question is, you know, in App Inventor, what are the two main windows? And the two main windows are, are kind of shown at the top right here. One's the designer, and that's what you're looking at, okay? And it's basically a user interface builder. It's really how you kind of show what the app's going to look like. You're not even really coding in terms of showing how the app's going to behave. You're just showing the design of the app. So the pictures, the text. Um, you will put some non-visible components in here. Like in this case, we've got players that know how to play sounds. Um, but for the most part, you're working with the user interface. And that's called the App Inventor Designer. Okay, when you click on the Blocks button, and you can switch back and forth. It's basically a toggle. Here's where you program the behavior of an app. So in other words, when someone clicks a button, what happens? Or, you know, when, when say, a text comes into your app or to your phone, how do you respond to that text? You know, any kinds of you know, interactive behavior, the blocks editor is, is where you do it. And this is, you know, kind of the harder part for most people. Um, the designer is, is easy as far as just being able to learn how to do it. You know, the hard part, of course, is designing a beautiful, beautiful app. But anyway, the two parts of App Inventor are the design of the blocks. You could say there's three parts. Um, the third, the third screen, really, the third window is really your phone, right? Because as you're building things, going between the design and the blocks, you can test on your device, whether it's a phone or tablet. So the first question I'm going to answer is, how do you test your apps? And App Inventor has got this great live testing facility. So I can click on Connect up here and choose AI Companion. And it's going to show me a barcode. Then on my phone, my phone's projecting on the screen here. You can see it over here. I'm going to click the AI2 Companion app. And it's going to open up the app. And then I'll just choose Scan QR Code. And when I do that, I can then select, or just I'm scanning the QR code. I'm lifting my phone above that QR code. And in just a second, you'll see the app show up on the screen. Okay, so it's really nice. You can test as you build your build your app. And notice over here on the computer, if I change, say, the screen title. So notice the title up here is I have a dream exclamation mark. As soon as I change it, so let's say um, I just want to name it dream. Okay. As soon as I hit return on that, it will change not only in the designer, okay, but on the phone. And you notice it just kind of reloaded the app. So every change you make, as soon as you make it, including changes to the blocks, they are going to be invoked on the phone so you can do live live testing. Okay, now one key quite thing is, you know, this app is really not on the phone. Really, it's the companion app kind of simulating the app running. So it's only for testing, right? If I, if I took off and, and disconnected my phone um, from the Wi-Fi connection, you know, the app's not really, really there. So the second question is, how do you install an app on, on your phone? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close the companion app. Okay, we don't need it on, on the phone. And the way you install on your phone is you click build over here at App Inventor and then say app and provide QR code for .apk. The APK is the extension, the file extension of an actual executable app for, for Android. So it takes a little while. It's going to build this um, and then it's going to bring up a QR code. And what I need to do on my phone is choose a QR code scanner, okay? Okay, so there's the, the QR code. Notice that it's only, this QR is only good for two hours, so you don't want to, like, copy this QR code and put it on a web page. You know, that's not how you, how you publish things. But you can use it for your own self to install. And what you do is, you know, don't open up the companion, but on your phone, choose a barcode scanner. I've got the Z crossing, the ZXING barcode scanner, but pretty much anyone will do. So I just opened up my scanner. Now when I scan this app, or sorry, scan the QR code, you can see it kind of brings it up in a browser. And really what's happening is it's gonna, it's gonna download the app I'm building really to my phone. So this is not testing. This is actually sending the app over to, to my phone. And I can, on my phone, I can kind of drag down from the top and I can see that in fact this APK file is being downloaded to my phone. And APK is just an app. It's an Android app, right? So when it gets downloaded, I can select that and it will install the I Have a Dream app on my on my um, phone. So I'm going to click it and it says, yeah, do you want to install? Yes, I want to install. This one happens to be I Have a Dream designed, okay? That's the name of my app. So I'm going to click on install 
and in just a few seconds the app's actually going to be on my phone. Okay, there it is. If I click open, looks the same as it looked before, but now it's actually running. And in fact, if I close it and I go back to my um, list of apps on my phone, let's see. So there's there's my regular screen. If I click apps, and if I go over somewhere in here, I'll be able to find the app I just downloaded. Let's see. Um, there it is. And and notice the icon's kind of ugly, but on the far right here is I have a dream design. Now I could change that icon um, if I come back over here and change the icon. So I can choose any image I want for my icon for my app. And that's what will show up on the little, as the little app icon here. So anyway, that's how you actually install an app onto the phone once you've, once you've built it. You kind of do that when you're done, whereas you do the live testing, the connection stuff as you're, as you're still developing things. So the third question I want to answer is, you know, what if you don't have a device? So I've got my device projecting. What if I don't have a phone at all, but I still want to test Android apps, okay? Or what if my Wi-Fi is maybe not working? Okay, the way you do it is you go to Connect, and in choosing, instead of choosing the Companion, you choose Emulator, okay? So I first got to reset the connection, and then I can choose Emulator. Now, before I do this, actually, if you want to use the emulator, now this will work on my computer because I've already downloaded something, but if you want to use the emulator, and the emulator is just like a kind of a fake phone that runs on your computer, so it can't really, you know, test stuff, but it's, it looks, you know, looks like a phone and it will run your, run your apps, okay? Um, but you just say connect an emulator and then it, it'll, it'll come up for you, okay? Now, it's a little trickier. Before you even do anything, you've got to set things up and, and, um, I'm just going to cancel this, but what what will show up here in the emulator is is my actual app, okay? At some point, um, but the way you have to do to set it up is first you need to go to help and go to get started, okay? And there's actually you know if you're using the Wi-Fi connection, you can test without downloading anything to your computer, okay? But if you're using um, if you want to use the emulator, you have to go to these setup instructions and to get started at, at MIT App Inventor. And then you have to choose, you know, this don't have an Android device, use the emulator. And essentially, it just asks you to download some software to your computer. And you can do Mac or Windows. Uh, it doesn't quite work for Linux yet. But if you've got a Windows machine or Mac version, you can download some stuff. And then you can use the emulator. And you really only need to do that if you don't have a device handy to, to test things. Okay? Anyway, make sure to look at this page. And especially if you're using Windows, it's a little trickier to do the setup. But you just have to kind of go through the instructions and should should be fine. All right, the next question is kind of, you know, for this I have a dream app. You know, let's name the parts of the thing. So it's kind of like, it's almost like in, in you know, in English and, you know, language arts, you have subjects and verbs. And, you know, we need to be able to kind of talk about an app and talk about its parts, okay? So the first thing is, you know, what's a visual component? Well, we've got a number of components. You can see them all here. One is this label. A label is just some text, right? Um, in fact, you know, this label, you can see has this text. And the reason that text is showing up is because it's got a property called text, which we can fill out here, right? So anyway, label one is a component. Image one is another component. It just shows a picture. Uh, this label is another component. And then these guys our buttons, the MLK button, the Malcolm button, all right? Those are our visual, visual components, okay? Um, we also have non-visual components. So think of your app as these things you can see or things the user will be able to see on the screen, but then there's also these guys which are kind of non-visible, okay? We've got two, one that plays a speech by MLK, one that plays a speech by Malcolm. And, and you know, the idea is think of these as little functional guys inside the app that know how to do things. So the user's not going to see them, but in your blocks you're going to be able to use them to do things, in this case to play play a speech. So your app kind of consists of visible components and non-visible components. Okay, I, I kind of mentioned this third one, this property. So every component, so everything, right, really is made up of a bunch of memory cells, okay? Um, let's just take this label one. It's got a background color, all right, none in this case. You can actually see the, the screen's background color, all right. Uh, what, whether the font's bold, 
I showed you the, the text component, which is the one that tells you what, to, what it's drawn here, width, height. Okay, these are the properties of label one. So every component, you know, you can see it, and, but the reason it looks the way it does is because its properties are all filled up in a certain, certain manner. Okay, so the properties are kind of the part, or not the parts, but the attributes of a component, okay, that make it look the way it, the way it does. Okay, uh, so those are kind of the, the designer kind of stuff. Uh, for these next parts, we're going to look at the blocks side of things. Okay, so let's look at the blocks. Remember, the blocks are, are where the behavior of the app is, is specified. Okay, first thing is, what's an event? Well, we've got two events that we care about in this app. One is when the user clicks the MLK button, and the other one is when the Malcolm button is clicked. So really, just this top part, the MLK button dot click, that's the event, okay? Something that can occur that our app can respond to. That's an event. Now, the event handler is actually a, you know, we've got two of those. These whole things are event handlers. So the event handler consists of both the event, MLK button dot click, and a response, okay? And that response is really a bunch of blocks or a bunch of function calls that make something happen. So the event handler is this whole thing. The event is what's in this top of the yellow block. And then the response to the event is all the blocks within this kind of enclosing event handler block, the when do block, okay? So event, the whole thing's the event handler and then, you know, these guys, like calling pause, calling start, those are function calls. They, they say, look, app or phone, do something. In this case, either play or stop, stop a speech. So those are, those are your function calls. And conditional, you know, those are these if statements, right? So we don't always want to play a speech or start one or pause one. Under certain conditions, we'll pause it. Other conditions, we'll start it. And those are called conditional blocks because Instead of just going down here, one, two, three, we're going to only conditionally do some of these operations. All right, so an event handler, you know, kind of consists of an event and a response, where that response is a bunch of function calls, okay? An app really consists of, you know, a bunch of components, you know, the, the things we see in the designer, okay, and a, you know, a set of event handlers okay really you can say the app is defined by its event handlers right at least its behavior the app's behavior is defined by how it responds to particular events okay so you've kind of got the app user interface or its components and then you've got the app's behavior and its behavior is defined by a bunch of event handlers